When the first edition of Mrs Beaton's Household Management was published in 1861, its readers were told that a Christmas dinner with the middle classes of this empire would scarcely be a Christmas dinner without its turkey. By this time, the turkey had become the main feature of the Christmas dinner, and for those who could afford it, it would, as Queen Victoria's reign progressed, displace all the other meats served during the festival. And it would almost certainly have been the main element on the Edwardian Christmas table of the Lloyd Graham family of Sewerby Hall. What the Lloyd Grahams may not have appreciated as they tucked into their Christmas dinner was that the turkey's history had a link to the East Riding through their near neighbours, the Strickland family of Boynton Hall. William Strickland, born circa 1520 and builder of Boynton Hall, just five miles from Sewerby, is widely believed to be the man responsible for bringing the turkey, a bird native to North America, to England. Strickland, it was said, had journeyed to America with the explorer Sebastian Cabot. He had returned a wealthy man, able to build Boynton Hall on the proceeds of his adventures. It was claimed that whilst in the Americas, he had acquired six turkeys from the Native Americans, which he had brought back to England and sold for tuppence each in Bristol Market, and that these birds were the first to cross the Atlantic. Whatever the truth behind this story, Strickland was granted the use of the turkey in his coat of arms in the 1550s, and he certainly did not discourage talk of his links to the bird. By the end of the 16th century, the turkey had found its way onto the Christmas table, perhaps with the help of Henry VIII, who is credited as being the first English monarch to eat the bird as part of the royal Christmas dinner. During the 17th and 18th centuries, turkey became increasingly popular as a Christmas food though it was one of several common alternatives. Roast beef was popular in the north of England and roast goose most common in the south. Swan or peacock might be enjoyed by the nobility, whilst a boar's head was considered most prestigious. For the poor, there was far less choice. Any meat at all might be welcome, and a chicken or locally caught wild rabbit might have been the most common sight on the festive table. In the 19th century, the Victorian development of Christmas into a time when family members gathered together increased the popularity of the turkey as, pound for pound, it could feed more than many of the alternatives. And in large middle-class households, it quickly became the meat of choice for Christmas dinner. Queen Victoria was known to dine on turkey at Christmas. And it is no coincidence that in his influential book Christmas Carol, Charles Dickens, who is credited with popularising so many of our modern Christmas customs, has Scrooge, said Bob Cratchit, a turkey. However, turkey remained an expensive meat for much of the 20th century, and it was not until more intensive farming methods, a general rise in the standard of living after the Second World War, and the growth in fridge ownership to keep the leftovers, that turkey became widely affordable and the ubiquitous feature of the Christmas table. Today, in an echo of Mrs Beaton's comments 160 years ago, 87% of the British population say Christmas would not be the same without a roast turkey dinner. And some 10 million turkeys are eaten in the UK at Christmas. All a far cry from those six birds sold in Bristol Market.